Well, welcome to tonight's real story. After closed door discussions and rumblings that it would come to a decision today, the Supreme Court is holding off its announcement on whether or not it'll hear the first major Second Amendment case in almost 70 years. They say the announcement could come now at the end of this month. But the real story is the outcome of the Supreme Court case would have a dramatic effect on your right as a gun owner, you know, assuming you own one buy one, really. It'll also have a major uh, effect on American history. It will either be written or rewritten in this case. Now, if you don't happen to have a copy of the Constitution handy, good for you, you're normal. But let me refresh your memory. The Second Amendment quite simply and clearly states that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It seems strange to me that our nation's capital, you know, the place where they store that little piece of paper with those words on it, refuses to understand that. That's what the case is all about. The District of Columbia has had a law on its books since 1976 that effectively bans almost everyone from keeping or carrying a handgun. Even if you were able to get a permit, listen to how crazy this is, yet another law makes it illegal for you to move your gun even to another room in your own house without yet getting another license. The bottom line is, this is, uh, it's craziness. You don't, you don't have to own a gun, but it is undeniable that our founding fathers believed so strongly in your right to do so that they specifically included it in our most sacred of national documents. Neither side of the gun lobby has any idea how this Supreme Court case could play out, uh, but they both think that at the very least it will be heard. and. That's why so many people are watching so closely, and tragically, there is so much freedom to lose. Chris Cox is the chief lobbyist for the National Rifle Association. Full disclosure, I am a lifetime member and proud of it, uh, Chris. Um, the Supreme Court uh, heard this case, or one similar to it, in 1939. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Roberts has said that they really kind of danced around it and didn't really address it. Any indication at all on which direction he would lean if he was going to say, yeah, let's really define it. Well, the 39 case, Glenn, as you mentioned, really did sidestep the Second Amendment. Now, I'm not going to try to guess what this court or any other court would do, but it is a very important issue, and gun owners all over the country are playing, paying close attention. Yeah, because what if they decide, if they really took it on and then didn't sidestep uh, step it, they would have to answer the fundamental question, are gun rights for militia members? or for citizens. I personally think it's very clear if you read the, the Founding Father's words, but, you know, judges are, quite honestly, not uh, usually reading the Founding Father's words. Hopefully the Supreme Court is different. Um, so really, that's what will be decided if they take it on, right? Glenn, Individuals this, over militia. That's exactly right. And this, at its core, is about self-defense. Do good people have a God-given right to defend themselves against bad people? In Washington, D.C., you don't have that right. And there's no clear failure or indictment on the failure of gun control than Washington, D.C. It simply hasn't worked. So this is whether or not the Second Amendment protects you as an individual from making that choice of defending yourself against a criminal or being left defenseless. Chris, any idea, I mean, I can imagine the ramification, any idea how this would play out if the Supreme Court would ever come out and say, People don't have a right to own guns. It's only for the militia. Turn your guns in or we're going to come collecting them door to door. Well, that's a very dangerous slope to go down, Glenn. We've already had cases in New York and Chicago where honest people use guns in self-defense and were arrested and prosecuted. So again, that's why gun owners all over the country are hopeful that the Supreme Court will uphold the lower, the lower court's decision that, yes, you do, as an honest person, you do have a right to own a gun. We're not talking about right to carry in the district. We're not talking about concealed weapons permits in the district. All we're talking about is keeping a gun in your home for self-defense. Because, Glenn, as you know, the worst case scenario is when that door gets kicked in or glass breaks at 2 o'clock in the morning. The best law enforcement's not going to be there. The politicians, they're certainly not going to be there. Paul Helmke and the Brady campaign won't be there. It's up to you, and we believe that the Second Amendment protects you as an individual, as yep. a good, honest person, to uh, own a firearm for self-defense. All right, thanks, Chris. Now